the Veterans Motocross of Nations event is proudly brought to you by Motul and their associate sponsors. Welcome to Farley Castle near Bath, which is situated in Somerset in the UK for the annual Veterans Motocross of Nations event. 600 riders from around the world have gathered here today to ride old bikes and old machinery against each other. The South African team returns with one thing in mind this year, and that is to get a podium position at the end of two days of frantic racing. The South African team consists of Neville Bradshaw, Ryan Hunt, Tony Riddell and Andre David. They're up against some serious opposition from the USA and the UK. John Dowd, Doug Dubak and Mark Eastwood, as well as the legendary Kurt Nichol. Global ASP Gavin Williams is our team manager. As a kid, I had dreams of riding and motocross just it was basically the forbidden fruit. I didn't have the money and I didn't have the bikes and I didn't have the talent. So I suppose it's living your dreams. You got old people, old bikes, the general, I think, are all in the 40s. Yeah, yeah with the uh, VMX bikes, it is the biggest in the world. And in Europe, this is the biggest motor race. You're racing against the same faces that you raced against 20 years ago. It's lovely. You don't stop riding because you get old. You get old because you stop riding. The fire's still there, you know. I still, uh, I still get fired up for it and still love riding, so. I've been to Farley Castle nine consecutive years in a row. I've ridden, I've watched, and we've brought a team. It's always my dream to see South Africa podium. We got close last year, but in the dying moments, uh, we lost the podium. We said one more time, let's give it a bash this year, and we shipped all the bikes out from South Africa. Here we are. It's nice to see the two strokes being ridden again. Um, it's nice to see the diversity of riders from world champions to has-beens to never-beens. So it's, it's an interesting permutation of riders. The solidarity, friendship and camaraderie, you probably don't see in many sports. Whereas here there's a lot more solidarity. It's competitive, but I think people are, it's, uh, I think with time people compete, but it's not at the expense of the other. Our dream, collective dream, is to get onto the podium. Look, the plan is to get four riders across the line in each heat uh, and then hope that we get a couple of good results to get up to the top. The thing's about consistency as opposed to speed in isolation. So we've got, we got the speed with Neville, the consistency with Ryan, Tony and Andre. And if we can get two or three guys into the top ten per heat, I think we've got a very good chance of podium and podium in high. So that would be the dream. I'm not sure if Dave would like us to take that trophy back to South Africa, but it, we would like to try. The three bikes that are on display here at the moment, there's two more in the truck. They're all bikes that have picked up and been rebuilt from ground up three times now. So each time we come to Farley when we get back, they're completely rebuilt. Look, I think the, the big challenge is to make sure you choose bikes that you can get spares for and not to use anything but your old stock spares if they are available. It's becoming increasingly more difficult. We stockpile the spares, so at any one point there's probably four or five Hondas in pieces that you can get the spares if necessary. Um, generally speaking, you can get spares for the CR500 and the Kawasaki 500s and the Micos. I first rode this track in 1985 and 1986. We're still doing the same step ups up the hill. But yeah, we just look at the track differently now. Now you want to, you think you can actually go faster than when you were younger. So I don't know if that's experience or just stupidity, but yeah, I've been riding for 49 years. On, in, when I started, there were no motocross bikes for the juniors. So we rode on road bikes with Noblies. And then won a few South African championships. And then in 81, my dad said, do you want to go to Europe or America? And I tried America. Wasn't bad. Came back, tried Europe. Did much better. And that's it. Came to Libya for five years. The Grand Prix. And 96, retired after crashing in the Belgium Grand Prix. Broken bones. Uh, 47 broken bones so far. 
trying not to count. You either like it or you don't like it, you know. It's one of those things. This is probably the most sane motorsport there is. So at least you know where you're going. And if you crash, it's actually your own fault. No one else's, really. Better dark clouds over there again. It seems to be up and down all day. But it is the same for everyone. As long as the rain stays away, the track, track is awesome, man. Fast. But uh, yeah, Neville's doing the double down here, which I saw one guy doing this morning and went straight over there and the bars down into the river, so, because there's no room for error. Uh, yeah, the ruts in the forest were very different and it's clay, so you're hitting it at speed and the bike's all over the place and then you come out the forest and then it's dry and great track. Last year was the first one back and I think we're better prepared this year. You know, and all the mechanics are busy working their butts off here right now, trying to clean up all the mud and that from the box. Getting them prepped for the first race, which is coming up shortly. But yeah, they, they're all doing a good job and they're professional mechanics. So we don't have anything to do with the box. We're actually just the jockeys. No, these, these, these bikes basically get packed away for another year. Gavin brings them out for Farley. So we all stay in Johannesburg, but these bikes stay in Cape Town. So the first time we ride these bikes is when they just tell you to go out and go qualify. And qualifying is really different, yeah. In our country, we've got to do a sighting lap and all that. Yeah, it's the first lap you must go flat out. Second lap is in your qualifying. And you try to put another lap in qualifying and then fourth lap you're in. That's it. So there's no slow. You've got to try to jump everything on your first lap, which is you spend a lot of time watching to see what everyone else is trying to do. We've had some mechanical issues while we were testing this week on, on a supercross track in the Midlands somewhere. But luckily we did actually do the test, so that's all sorted. The bikes are great in practice. You know, just now, just change the suspension a little bit because yeah, the, the bumps on the downhills, the braking bumps are pretty big. You hit one and you do like six meters before you hit the next one. So, but the high speed, I mean, I think we're in fifth three or four times on the 500s, as fast as these things can go. And then you break hard, so. Luckily, I got a friend in Joburg that helped show how to fix these brakes, because the brakes on the old bikes are not so good. It's a 1989 500cc CR. So, it's very good, fast, heck of a fast. It makes a 450 look like nothing. With these bikes, they, yeah, if you have a scary moment, you, you are awake. So you can carry on with that. But yeah, they're different. These 500s are something else. Up these hills, yeah, that it's hard to keep the front wheel down. You think the front, all you do is you just feel in the back, patter, patter, and the front is smooth all the way up. But yeah, you don't grab big handfuls. You gotta like try ease it in. But the tight corners are difficult on the 500 because it wants to store. But once we get going, and that fast section is, yeah, it's heck of a fast. While you're riding, you cannot think of anything else. You're just out there doing your thing. It's a day with friends, having a chat outdoors, and then it's back to the norm. Get back. It's probably just an outlet, you know, just to get away from it. We'll be back with more veterans, motocross of nations, right after the break. <laughs> 